The Universal Basic Income, or UBI, is an ambitious social program which has been gaining traction over the last few years, thanks in large part to this man, Andrew Yang. He's running for US president, though his chances of becoming the Democratic nominee are low because of his low ratings. Nevertheless, he has proven popular on the internet and especially on the new left, if you want to call it that. That's because of his proposal for what he calls a freedom dividend. It's essentially a UBI. But what is that? And what does my title imply that I don't like it? Well, we'll get to that. Let's first go over the basics. A UBI would be a set amount of money given to people unconditionally. For now we will use Andrew Yang's plan because the specifics like who gets the money and how much can vary. Yang's plan is to give every American citizen over the age of 18 $1,000 a month. Yang doesn't advertise this a lot in public but that would probably replace some social security like unemployment benefits and some healthcare stuff. His website mentions something like that. It would probably also remove the need for all of the bureaucrats whose job it is to bully unemployed people into getting a job. There are many advantages to giving out money to everyone rather than just to unemployed people. One of them is that with usual unemployment benefits you may just lose all of them if you find a job. Here's an example of someone I know. She gets 500 euros a month in unemployment benefits and she's searching for a job. She found a part-time job where she gets 550 euros for working 20 hours a week. Would you take that deal? She didn't. And before you judge her, keep in mind, she didn't not take the job because she doesn't want to work, but because she wanted a full-time job in the first place and because 20 hours a week aren't worth 50 euros a month. She isn't lazy, she's being rational. But with a UBI, she would always get those $1,000, even if she got a job, even if it's a part-time one. She would get to keep all of that money. Work is always rewarded. This is one of the upsides. Another one is the fact that those who have stable jobs could work few hours and still have the same income. Or they could work the same amount of time and get a higher standard of living. It could also allow a sort of payment for socially necessary work which is currently not paid, like housework and reproductive labor. Finally, families could afford to live with one primary bread giver. Again, I guess. But this time let's not do it in a really sexist way, hopefully. Alternatively, both parents could just work part-time. Now, you may wonder who is going to pay for all of this, and the answer isn't necessarily easy, but it's not as unimaginable as it may seem. Yang has a whole section on his website dedicated to how he is going to pay for it, and it's not really relevant to my point, so I'll just assume it all works out and it will work forever, even through all natural and economic crises, inflation, and all of the other things that could prevent the US government from continuing it. So then, why does my title imply that I dislike it? You may or may not have noticed that I am a bit of a socialist and I like helping the working class. And it really seems like a universal basic income would be great for the working people, doesn't it? And in the past I used to like the idea of a UBI. Hell, there even used to be a video of me defending the UBI on this channel. But looking a bit closer I changed my mind on it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those people who want to oppose helping the working class to get them angry enough to start a revolution. I think that it's a horrible idea and I think that we should do everything we can to help the people, which is why I support minimum wages and universal healthcare. But I am still a little hesitant on the UBI. Let's look at why Young is proposing it in the first place, shall we? Luckily his website explains it to us. Essentially automatization will make most people unemployed through no fault of their own and we somehow need to keep people alive even if they can't work. The video humans need not apply by CGP Grey from a few years back sums it up pretty good. So the goal of Yang is not to improve the conditions of the people but to secure the future for everyone. Seems good enough, looks like a noble goal. And as I mentioned before I used to like the idea of a UBI as well. To me it seemed like the only way a future could be secured once most people can't get to work anymore. It was also sort of a social stream, working becoming entirely optional, the people no longer being slaves to the economy, it sounds great. But now let's approach this differently. Let's not look at it in terms of the ups and downsides and in terms of policy or proposals. Let's do Marxist analysis of the universal basic income. Let's set the stage. We live in a neoliberal capitalist society. We have our two classes, bourgeoisie, that's the capitalists, and proletariat, who are the workers. The bourgeoisie are the people who make money by owning things. They are our landlords, factory owners, and major shareholders. People like that. They profit by owning. And on the other side, we have the proletariat, the people who need to work in order to survive because they don't own enough stuff to live off their passive income alone. Those two classes have different interests, like for example, a landlord wants high property values so he can make lots of money and the tenant wants low property values to be able to pay rent and still have some money left for other things. 
the state is a tool of the ruling class. This means that the class in power uses the state to help them in the class war. For example, by setting a minimum wage or by cutting taxes on the 1%, depending on who is in power. Right now we live in neoliberal states and they are very much on the side of capital. For example, the state provides education for the people and roads so the bourgeoisie has good infrastructure and an educated workforce. This makes business easier and profit higher. Of course, countries also compete for businesses via offering them tax breaks or similar. This is why Apple only pays half a percent in tax. It's because the states aim to please the capitalists in hopes that their wealth will trickle down. The state very much serves the economy over the people right now. In their defense, most politicians probably genuinely believe that their support of the economy helps the people. As the Austrian Economic Chambers put it after the reintroduction of the 12-hour workday, if the economy is well, everyone is well. Of course, 90% of the people hated having to work even more and it has undoubtedly made many people a lot less well, but whatever. Now, where does the UBI fit into this Marxist view of society? Is it the tool of the working class used against the capitalist class? Not really. As I mentioned before, the ruling class currently in power is the capitalist class. Andrew Yang himself is an entrepreneur and a major capitalist. This doesn't mean that everything he does is bad, that's not how the world works, but it means that we should question his motives twice. So now for some reason the capitalist class is in favor of this policy. Why is that? Well, he told us, because automatization will make most working people unemployed. And maybe Young cares about this because he's a genuinely good person. But we should also keep in mind that while the bourgeoisie exploits the working class, it also needs the working class to consume the products they sell. Capitalists own factory and exploit the workers in them to create things which they then sell to the very working people that produce them. If all the workers were replaced with machines, then nobody would be able to buy the products from the bourgeoisie. That worries the capitalists. Not to mention that a lot of hungry unemployed people might get the idea to take this whole class warfare thing a little more seriously than we do today. So what to do? How can the capitalists keep the workers pacified and able to pay the bourgeoisie? With the UBI. So from a Marxist perspective, a universal basic income would be little more than the bourgeoisie putting the proletariat on life support giving them just enough money to avoid revolution and enough to continue to purchase products to keep the profit flowing. Essentially, this is another example of the ruling class using the state for its profit. The state would basically give the capitalists a population with money whom they can sell their products to. A UBI would be the next costly thing the state would do to serve the economy. So maybe in the future we would then have 90% of the population being unemployed, dependent on the state for the survival, while the 1% owns all of the machines which hold more productive power than our modern economy does with only a fraction of the workers. The UBI may seem like a good thing for the people, but in reality it's just another hot trick for capitalism. Let me suggest an alternative. The reason we need a UBI in the first place is because most would be unemployed, while a few would own the machines that produce everything. What if we changed the way the economy was run? What if we said that the things produced by a machine belong to everyone? Not just the person who owns the machine, everyone. Collective ownership. This way we wouldn't need a UBI. Everyone would get what they need. And we wouldn't have to worry about 90% of those people being poor while the 1% continues to profit off machines. There would still be jobs for those who want them, but work itself may not be necessary anymore. It would be a fully automated economy built by everyone serving everyone. But right now we aren't going there. Right now we're sliding towards a future where a few people will own everything that is produced by machines, a world in which technological advancement allows a few people not to work by getting everything the machines produce while everyone else is barely able to survive on government money. And if we get a UBI we may very well end up like that. It is a great idea and I admire that people are so forward thinking, but the UBI will not save us from a bad future. To save us from a bad future, what we need to do is to change the way we view ownership. Why would the product of a fully automated factory forever belong to the person who once paid for it? Or their children or grandchildren? Why not give it to everyone? The universal basic income is very much a neoliberal solution to a capitalist problem. The profit drive of capitalism makes most workers unemployed and if you can't imagine anything but capitalism, your solution will probably not be making useful systemic changes, but relying on the government to fix the problem, just as neoliberalism always does. But at some point, we may have to consider that adding band aids to capitalism is no longer feasible. Maybe it is time to look at change. So in conclusion, should we support a universal basic income? <sighs> I don't know. 
it's certainly a good step and it would help countless people, but the problem is that we may slide into a world where the means of production are fully automated and in the hands of the bourgeoisie, while the remains of the proletariat would be dependent on the government for survival. I guess we can say that the UBI should not be our goal. Our goal should be a world in which products of automatization belong to everyone and not just one person. And that way we wouldn't need a UBI. But in the meantime, should we support it? I don't know. I'm genuinely not sure. So I will leave that decision to you. Feel free to tell me your conclusion and your reasoning in the comment. And while you are scrolled down there, leave a like and a sub as well. Oh, and join the Discord. Until the next time. See ya.